Here we go. It is Jacob Warren, the Vol Report, brought to you by Bassy Lawn and Garden. Man alive, it's worth the drive. And if you're listening on one of our audio platforms, I feel sorry for you because you're miss missing out on one heck of a stash. You've rocked it a couple times. This is a new level. Oh, yeah. With the little, little, <laughs> little flavor saver is what I call it. Is that a, a soul patch, I think, is called that too, maybe? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we rocked it, man. It's middle of camp, you know what I mean, trying to give the guys some juice, some energy, give them something to laugh at, smile about. <clears throat> so here we are. <laughs> That's kind of been – your thing you've done that you did that in spring did you did that oh, yeah. do that last we, year too spring stash that, that was the thing we all did it in the spring all the tight ends did it um i couldn't convince them all to do it <laughs> in the fall this time but i don't know i don't think it's a terrible look right i think i get i get differing opinions on it some people like it some people hate it but it'll grow back I mean, it's already growing back you see so it'll grow back soon i might i might take it back down though we'll see no you kind of look like a modern day magnum pi okay I'm actually, like, I know what that is because I know. don't know. It's Tom Selleck. And I'm all, by the way, I got my first senior citizen discount. Did I tell you that? They didn't even ask. <laughs> no. I'm not kidding. There you go. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, I felt a little sick. But if you want 10% off a of Buddy's drink at any point, Buddy's Barbecue, I'm willing to take you out. Awesome. They might give me a student discount, so I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I'm going to get the same one as you. <laughs> we, we got a lot to get to. Let's talk about as the Vols continue to adapt to Cooper Mays' absence. Also, we'll talk scrimmage notes. One wide receiver that I haven't even mentioned his name to this point is having an impact in preseason camp, which is pretty cool. But let's uh, start, Jacob, with that left guard position because you immediately talk about the center position with Coop temporarily sideline here. But the <laughs> left guard position probably brings, I would think, Andre Kurgan, or if you want to talk about who – might be battling for that position. I mean, yeah, like obviously the guys are the guys, right? You got Andre, you got even, you know, Ollie Lane working at guard. You got Jackson Lampley working at guard. You got some of our younger guys kind of repping in there. And we also obviously Sprags is at the right guard position. So him trying to just bring people along and all the, all those things. But yeah, man, that, that position is obviously up for grabs and, you know, we have a lot of people competing for it right now. Um, I don't know. End of the day, I think is you just need a guy that, um, is smart, obviously, first of all, understands the kind of interior, just how the interior of the office line works. And I mean, all of them do, right? They play the position, but a guy that that's super physical um, can, can make space in the, in the, in the a gap, B gap, whatever it may be uh, fast in his pools, decisive, uh, physical, all those things, kind of what you're looking for. Um, and all of them do a good job. Um, obviously we'll, you know, see who, who they go with. Um, not my call at the end of the day. Um, so, <clears throat> I obviously love all those guys and looking forward to just watching them compete. What's been your impression of Andre Keurig when, when you've been around him? Yeah. Great dude, man. Um, ever since he, he got on campus and we may have talked about this back in the spring, um, uh, super open book, man. Like he's just kind of come on the campus and just been embraced by us. And he's, he's, uh, been more than happy to you know, get to know us and be around us and all that stuff. And a uh, really fun guy to be around. He's funny. He's cool. Um, easy to talk to, easy to get along with, plays really hard, man. Like it is a smart guy and, and does really work his butt off every day. Um, you know, pushes through a lot of stuff is real, real gritty and, and just really, uh, really cares a lot about ball first of all, but also this place uh, just in the short time he's been here. Nice. Um, a, a, the first scrimmage and it's, been the case at every single preseason yep. camp the defense wins the first scrimmage mm -hmm. um but you guys bounced back um what did you think of your your second scrimmage as an offense i mean yeah there's there's things that that happen in the first scrimmage you know maybe your first uh live reps or your first you know chance to really go out there and do it uh with you know, no questions asked about, you know, where the spot is or you know, was that a tackle or was that a catch? Did he break that tackle or was that really, you know, holding all these different things that, you know, these variables that aren't included in practice, right? Because we kind of try to eliminate them just for our own health, our own sake, all these things. But you get a scrimmage and you get to go out there and just let loose. And obviously, first scrimmage, defense always wins, right? Whatever it is. But um, second scrimmage, you're able to kind of dial into the details of, of, you know, what do we mess up in our first live action reps? The first reps of the last scrimmage, like, what was it that, you know, caused us to not have success? Um, 
and then you're able to attack those things in the second scrimmage. So I think just things like tempo, obviously details, um, you know, having the right IDs and, and with your with your linebackers, talking about on the front end with run plays and pass plays and um, just little details and, and, you know, how we play. Um, and those are things, obviously, that we focused on this past you know, week of practice and we're able to go into the second scrimmage and have a bit more success and just be able to kind of play our game. I, I thought I knew your roster really well, and you brought up uh, Dayton Sneed, who had a touchdown in, in with the spring game, and you really like in, in preseason camp. Your receiver group is going to be tough to crack, obviously, but yeah. what do you think of Dayton Sneed? Yeah, man, a guy that <clears throat> really not a lot of people know about. Um, obviously, he, he caught a touchdown in the spring game. I don't know if that's obvious. I don't know if a lot of people know that, but caught a touchdown in the spring game, um, a kid that Man, moves really well, is fast, and has good hands, and, and plays hard. Um, a guy that you know won't get a lot of the shine, but uh, has really good days. Like like yesterday at the scrimmage, um, just showed up a lot across the middle of the field, uh, making plays and third downs and goal lines and red zones, all those things. So he's, I mean, just a, a talented kid. Yeah, it sounds like you're in the middle of a war zone right now. I hope you're. Yeah, uh, I'm good. <laughs> so it doesn't sound crazy, but <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, kind of caught me off guard. But yeah, man, Dayton uh, again. Really athletic, really talented kid. Um, hopefully, we'll get to see him a little bit in the fall. Yeah. Um, it, it, as far as you, you mentioned over the middle, and I noticed that it, it seemed like Joe Milton was just incredibly crisp in the Orange Bowl of passes over the middle, those dig routes, those slants. Yeah. Does he excel in that um, particularly, those passes? I mean, yeah, obviously he's got the deep ball and <clears throat> is spectacular at throwing that and just the timing and everything with wide receivers is really, really meshing up well. But, I mean, dude, that's, you know, ideal for him, right? He's a tall guy, can see pretty much over everybody in front. Um, so having guys coming, you know, into his vision in the middle of the field and being able to just deliver a ball, whether it's you know, in between two defenders or, you know, whether, you know, squeezing it in a window or, you know, putting it over top of somebody and kind of trying to drop it in, in the middle. Um yeah, I mean, he, he really does excel, and that's a ball that he feels extremely confident throwing. You know, being a bigger guy, can stay in the pocket, can read these things out, and can make those throws. Boy, how important is it to get your head flipped around on some of those when he puts a heat on a, yeah. a heater on a slant um, or a dig route? That's boy, that ball's coming. But at the same time, it's like you you appreciate that because you know, he's able to make a lot of the throws that other people won't be able to make. Just the way that he is able to actually throw the ball with, with such force and accuracy. Um, other people can't really make those throws. So something that, you know, we appreciate. And obviously you get used to the speed and, and you know, how fast the ball's coming, but yeah, you better, you better get your eyes around pretty quick. No. And um, I would think that would benefit you as, as a tight end, not to say that all of your passes are, are, are all of your routes are over the middle, but yeah. I'd say a good portion of them are. For sure. Yeah. And that's definitely part of the field that, you know, you want to attack as a, a bigger body, right? You got people running all over the place, flying all over the place. So being able to be big in that area is um, definitely very important. You know, it's interesting. We we talked last week about Ethan Davis, and it was so cool how he said that <clears> you're <throat> like um, that, that people should want their sons or uh, brothers or whatever um, to be like you. And and he, he really looks up to you. And I think he's going to have a fantastic career at Tennessee. But when you you look at McCallan Castles. He was brought in for a reason. That's that's immediate help, and we haven't talked about him in a while. How how do you think he's performed at this point? Yeah, just the the steps that he's taken um, in the run game for sure. Definitely in the pass game, just being super confident that you know he does fit in this system. Uh, has a, a lot of reps, man. Like the guy has been. Uh, he's one of my be- one of my best friends, right? So <clears throat> I can talk pretty easily about him. But the guy goes to Cal out of high school. Is playing as a freshman, true freshman. Like he's playing the game, he's in the game, like getting reps, you know, rotating, whatever. Ends up at UC Davis is an All American in their conference and helps them, you know, win a lot of games. And the guys played a lot of ball. So um, just for him to be able to come and just adjust and adapt to our system, uh, and, you know, it took take some time, right? But he got here in the spring, had a whole spring ball. And now we're seeing this progress that he's making through fall camp of you know, understanding exactly where he needs to be and understanding just kind of the feel of, of different run fits and uh, making decisions on the perimeter, um, <clears throat> catching balls, making plays. You know, like I said, again, these big situations that tight ends are asked to be in, you know, third downs and in the red zone and all these different things is he's, he's really excelling and um, becoming extremely, extremely good at um, 
being a part of this offense, which is exactly what we need him to do, right? He came in for a reason, like you said. Uh, he's a six-year guy like me, so um, he's not waiting around, right? He's here to play, and he's here to to make plays. So, The Vol Report brought to you by Vassy Lawn and Garden Man Alive. It's worth the drive. Commercial and industrial mowers right there in Cleveland, Tennessee. Worth the drive from Nashville, Knoxville, or Chattanooga. Man Alive, it is worth the drive at Vassy Lawn and Garden. Go to Vassy. Dot com. You said you guys have become best friends. You've only yeah. known each other for like a few months. Yeah, I know. That's my dude, bro. He, um, again, dude, like all these transfer guys that we're getting in are just open books, man. They, they come in and um, just so willing to, you know, uh, talk, so willing to just be around, hang out, engage, uh, try to get to know us. Um, you know, obviously, I, I know a lot about just the area and, and Knoxville and everything like that. So him just kind of hanging out with with me and my buddies, um, it's cool to kind of you know make him feel at home, right? Because this is my home and I I know how to do that. So just making him feel at home, making him feel welcomed, and um, he definitely fits into our tight end group. And and then also my my actual group of, of friends that I hang out with outside of the facilities um, has been nothing but 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 good to be around. So yeah, that's my that's my dude. Did you, because you're a smart guy, did you purposefully reach out to him and try to connect because he was a tight end? Is that what kind of led to the friendship? I mean, yeah, obviously we're in the same group, right? We're in the same room. And, and he actually, <clears throat> you know, was around a little bit. They, they're able to bring the transfers and the new guys in for some bowl stuff. Um, so he was kind of around and was kind of, you know, timid and shy at first and then obviously like as he would be moved across the country is a new program doesn't know if he's going to be accepted or whatever um but yeah just just experience just time um you know you, you i'm a firm believer that you go through some things with people and it, it makes you really close right so just going through this the winter conditioning and these all these hard runs and workouts that we're doing and then having spring practice where we're having to rely on each other you know literally rely because we're in there at the same time and you know my job depends on his job and vice versa so um, you know, going through these things with, with somebody really <clears throat> brings you closer. And then obviously the the added element of being able to hang out with them outside of football and get to know them and, and going to eat and going to the movies and just doing all the things that we do uh, just as a friend group has definitely, uh, definitely kindled the, the relationship for sure. How would you describe him as a player now that you've had spring and half a preseason camp to take a look? Um, he's extremely strong, extremely powerful. Um lifts more than just about everybody right in the weight room and, and is truly um, just an extremely athletic and powerful person. Um, definitely understands leverage, understands, you know, how can I actually be successful in this block? Right. That's a lot of things that, you know, a young player for sure takes them a little while. Cause you know, once you get to this level, right, everybody is, is big, everybody's strong, everybody's fast. It's about what's going to set you apart and how are you going to, you know, how are you going to, give your give yourself that edge right and so you know leverage is obviously a really big part of it when you're trying to block people and, and move other people right so he understands leverage extremely well and understands how to you know use his body to to make blocks and um you know very very similar to me in the sense of you know understands the offense enough to be able to make things right you know whether it's the offensive line moving to a wrong spot or or you know something happens and they go again um like here in Beirut in the 80s. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, whether it's just something's wrong or a wide receiver's in the wrong alignment and being able to have the confidence to speak up and say, hey, like, this is what we're doing. Like, let's go, like, you know, get it right, whatever it may be. So, um, yeah, man, full confidence in him, and um, he'll, he'll get the job done. He'll be just fine. So you said he's one of the strongest players in the weight room. Do you mean among tight ends or everybody? I mean, tight ends, offensive skill positions, like – guy probably lifts more than some of the offensive linemen you know what i mean like this guy he's he's, he's truly really strong gym rat guy that um, loves the gym loves working out loves lifting weights um and it definitely definitely pays off for him when you mentioned he knows leverage too yeah it sounds like to me that he's probably a pretty good run blocker right now he is and that's something again like you said is just how you know how do we do it at tennessee is going to be different than how he, he's done it in the past um so just learning our footwork learning how we you know how we use our hands and how, you know, how we you know, run our different schemes, um, you know, as he's figuring that out is having a lot of success um, just with what we're asking him to do. Not, not we, I'm, I'm a part of it, but what the offense is asking him to do, you know what I'm saying? Like <clears throat> just his, his ability uh, definitely shines through whenever he truly realizes and understands, you know, what it is he's trying to get done. 
I'm going to ask you to completely oversimplify your job, but I'm yeah. pe- okay. But people don't look at you all the time during a play. Most people look at the ball. You're yeah, yeah, you're good. Yeah, people look at the defense. Right. But Jake, what percentage of the time when you were on the field last year were you running routes, uh, pass blocking, and run blocking? If you had to break it down by percentage, um. I mean, we're pretty much tied. I don't know the numbers, right? We're pretty much tied to what it was going on, right? So if if it's a run, I'm probably somewhat related to it, whether I'm on the perimeter blocking for the run or, you know, I'm actually in the box doing, you know, pulling or inserting or cutting off the backside. Pretty much every run, we're going to have our hand in it a little bit. Um, the pass protections, you know, gets a little bit different because a lot of times we're out in routes and stuff. And so, you know, those two might be kind of split 50, 50 with the pass game, but pretty much every run they're asking us to be involved in, in some way, way, shape or form. So, um, don't have a number, but, um, I don't know. You could probably look at how many times we threw the ball and how many times we ran the ball. And, you know, that'd probably be about right. What are you, what are you best at out of those three things? Um, I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> like I do, like I know that, you know, I've, I've become pretty good at um, being in line, having the hand in the ground, being that kind of attached guy that um, can just kind of go get it, right? Can just use use big body, try to, you know, have good hands, good feet, um, and whether it's cutting out a C-gap or, or you know, I mean, pulling on a counter or, or whatever it may be. Um, just trying to be super solid in, in that and be super trustworthy that, you know, those backs can can trust their path and they can hit it and that the block's going to be there. It's going to be set up, all those different things. Um, <clears throat> definitely part of my game that uh, I think is, you know, is good, right? It is just being in, being in space, right? Being able to catch catch the ball, like the the tough balls across the middle or be a red zone threat or, or you know, be able to just make plays on third down, all those different things that, you know, a tight end really wants to do. I um, think, you know, more than capable of doing that as well. So, um, but yeah, I think I'm pretty good at in line, just blocking in the box for sure. Yeah. What do you enjoy doing the most? See, that's the thing too, is is younger, when I was younger, earlier in my career, I definitely probably enjoyed catching the ball and, and running around more. But as you, it makes sense, right? The, the better I got at blocking and the less it didn't feel good, right? It doesn't feel good when, you, when you're the one getting hit. <clears throat> but the more that I've learned, like how to use, again, how to use my body, how to use leverage, how to take angles and actually being the one that is delivering the hit, right. And actually doing, you know, doing the block, right. It's become a lot more fun to kind of try to perfect that part of my game. All right. Here's Jacob Warren. I'm Dave Hooker. The Vol Report brought to you by Bassey Lawn and Garden. Man alive. It is worth the drive. A presentation of Off the Hook Sports. <laughs> 